Hi, I'm Julie Martin, and I'm one of the teachers on EckhartYoga.com. And today I'm going to show you a little section of a class that's all about creating strength and stability in the shoulders and the arms. And, you know, when we play with these kind of exercises, what you'll notice if you're one of those people that loves to do handstands and arm balances and stuff like that, you're going to find a new connection into the stabilizer muscles around the back and into the abdominals. It's really going to help you give that give you that sense of power and connection. So if you want to get started, come with me and get on your hands and knees for a moment. And I'm going to start with my toes tucked under. So just as a brief warm up, we'll, we'll start a circular action. And with the hips moving around the knees and my chest root moving around my hands and my wrists. And I'm going to change direction a few times. And this is just to stimulate in the connection into the wrists and the shoulders and the knees into the hips because I'm going to need all of that to fire up and wake up as we move along. And then let's bring the hips back to the heels. Take the hands just a little bit, like a half of a handprint further forward. We're going to work into a rolling cat and cow. So tucking the toes under, pushing off with the hips, rolling through, cat, and then finding your cow. Take a moment to unlock your elbows. This is really important when we're trying to establish that connection into the sides of the ribs, into the upper back. If I lock out my elbows, it tends to go into the shoulders, right? So that's kind of going to be our theme. Then I push back to um, what I call crouching puppy and pushing up through cat to cow, making sure the shoulders and the elbows are nice and pliable and coming back through. Let's just do that a few more times. And then coming all the way into a neutral position. Now we're going to start our little challenging bit here by bringing your hands closer together. I'll turn towards the camera just for a moment so you've got a better view. I'm going to cross my right wrist over my left wrist. And you'll notice it's much harder for me to lock out my elbows now. So this is important. I want to keep this pliable. So you can see the muscles in the arms have to activate as well as the shoulders. And this is what's going to help us connect that into the upper core. So turning back this way, we're going back to those rolling cat cows, but now with the right hand crossed over the left. Hips back to the heels, push off, rolling forward. Notice this power here. I can get elastic here as I move into my cow and push back. Let's try that a few more times. I'm going to add an extra little bit here. As I come forward, I'm going to bring my left forearm down to the floor, left shoulder towards the floor, left hip towards the left heel. So I just take a little stretch there then and then bring that back up. Now I'm sweeping my right arm out and around. So now it's going to come behind the left wrist and I go back to those rolling cat and cows. Let's just do two of those. And then once again, I'm going to drop the right forearm now, right shoulder towards the floor, right hip towards the heel. Take a breath there and come back up to center. Then again, the left arm is now going to sweep around and under, coming back to the starting point. And then let's do two more of those rolling cat cows. And then one more time, right arm's going to circle. Whoops, forgot to drop the shoulder. So left forearm, left shoulder, left hip to the heel. Again, getting long through those same muscles that I'm activating, coming back up. Now the right arm's going to circle around. Left wrist is over the right wrist. And then we go back to that rolling cat and cow. And then one last time, dropping the right forearm, right shoulder, hip towards the heel, and elongating really through the upper ribs on that side. And then let's bring it back into center and take the left arm underneath. So we end up back at the beginning point, 
right wrist crossed over left wrist. I'm gonna feel that pliability for a moment as I slowly bring my knees closer together. We're gonna to challenge our stability here. Keep the left foot pushing down into the floor, extend the right leg out and away, and then bring the knee towards the elbows and extend it out and away. And let's do that three more times. Now keep your eyes focused on one point ahead of you. This is gonna help with your balance, but note that a little bit of wobble is really good. It creates that connection to our stabilizer muscles. And the next time the right leg's out, go ahead and sweep it around to the right. Toes facing forward, shift into the left hand, reach the right arm forward. And for a moment, take your time to plug that arm back into the shoulder socket. And you'll feel some muscles here on the side of the ribs start to connect. That's what we're looking for. Keeping the chest facing towards the floor, open that right arm out like a wing. Now I want the muscles in the upper back to work and then rotate open. The chest opens up to the right. Let's take a couple arm circles here. Now just letting all of that connective tissue have a nice massage. And then reach it all the way up. And then folding that arm behind the back, you can grab a hold of the back of your leggings or your hip or the thigh of the left leg. And then open up the chest and note what's going on with the arm that stays on the ground. There'll be a temptation to lock that elbow, but that puts pressure into the shoulder. So I wanna play with that little micro bend. Like I'm doing these like micro mini press ups, one arm press ups. And then when you're ready, we release the right arm all the way up to the ceiling and then dive it through. So the right shoulder goes towards the floor. I can adjust the left hand now, right ear towards the floor. And then I'm rocking a little forward and back. I'm getting some space into the inner thigh of the right leg. And then bring it all the way back upright. And now I'm going to take this right hand and just cross it behind the left. So now the left arm's on top. As I slide the right leg back, tuck the toes under. I'm going to go into cross arm plank. Left leg comes to join the right leg. And then I'm making circles with my hips and well, actually my whole body, right? I'm imagining I'm drawing circles on the floor with my belly button. A couple times in each direction. And then bring the knees down. Let's release that. Keep the wrist crossed just so you remember which one's on top and have a little cross arm child's pose. Rocking the hips from side to side. Taking a few breaths there. Just notice what you're feeling. Might be more into the back of the shoulders, into the sides of the ribs, a little bit into the biceps and triceps. It's all good. Everything's connected. And then we come back up and we do the same thing on the other side. So left hand starts crossed over the right. I'm bringing the knees a little bit closer together and I'm extending the left leg out and away and then bringing the knee towards the elbows. And then extend it back and away, and knee towards the elbows. And notice if you get that little bend in the elbows themselves, I gotta fire up lots more muscles, but it becomes more accessible, right? And then the next time you extend that left leg away, swing the left foot out to the side. Once again, turning the toes so they're facing the same direction as your fingers. Put some weight into the right hand now. Lift the left arm forward and then hug that arm back into the shoulder socket, keeping the chest towards the floor. Sweep it out to the side and then opening up to the left. So now my chest is facing towards my left foot. Take a few arm circles here, circling around a couple times in each direction. So I'm just getting some freedom now into the whole side of the body. And then reaching up, 
Bend the left elbow, fold it behind the back, go ahead and grab a hold of whatever feels comfortable. And once again, even though I'm looking away, I want to be aware of the hand that's on the floor and that elbow. And so I take those little micro one arm push ups. I'm just programming the muscles to say, hey, I need this stability here. This is going to help so much with any of your arm balances. Even downward facing dog, it's going to help with. Great. And then as you release that arm, we dive the left arm underneath the right, slide it through, arm for the needle, shoulder to the floor, ear to the floor. I can adjust this right hand. And then I'm shifting forward and back. Just having that bit of massage through the inner thigh, the adductors on the left side. And then as you come up, I'm sliding that right wrist behind. No, it's the left wrist behind the right wrist. When you cross your arms over, your brain does something funny. And then I sweep that left leg back. Again, I'm going into the cross arm plank, tuck the left toes under, get the leg active. So then as I add the other leg, I've already got that stability through the legs and the hips. Now I'm playing with the arms and circling. And you might find this a huge challenge because you'll notice so many other muscles have to fire up to help support this action. And that's the great thing. That's like the good news <laughs> that it's a little bit more challenging. And then when you're ready, bring the knees down to the floor. We can uncross the arms now, sweep them back, forehead to the ground, a little wiggle from side to side. And then when you're ready, coming all the way upright again. So just notice how that feels through the arms. And if you got out of the top of your shoulders, that's great. We start to really fire up, inform the body. What other groups of muscles do we need to support ourselves on our hands? Now, if some things started clicking for you, if that really fired you up, to learn more, then join us on EckhartYoga.com. You can get the whole rest of that sequence plus many more classes with myself and a load of other wonderful teachers. I hope to see you there.